What's going on everyone? I hope you've all been doing well these past two weeks. So for this video, um, I really decided to do it because I've had a lot of people asking me specifically how I coped, how I dealt with my HIV AIDS diagnosis. So to start off with, many of you know, my diagnosis was a complete shock to me. I went to, to see a doctor and I had gotten some blood work and some tests done. And I went into the doctor's office and she just flat out told me, you have HIV. And then it just was like a flood of tears just started to come out. And she's like, you know what? I'm gonna give you 10 minutes, do what you gotta do, cry, let it out, call someone if you need to, tell, tell your parents or whatever, and then I'll be back and then we can talk from there. So that was my very first reaction. I just started sobbing uncontrollably by myself in this doctor's office. And I called a couple people and um, yeah, I didn't really have much time to think at the moment because the doctor came back and then she told me, okay, we're gonna have you come back next week. Happened to be on my birthday and you're gonna go to the HIV AIDS clinic uh, and don't be alarmed because you're gonna see a lot of sick people a lot of people who don't look well and aren't doing well, but don't let that bother you. And so at that point, I, you know, I went home and I told my, who was my boyfriend at the time and now my ex about, about it so that he could go get tested too. And at the time I didn't know anything about HIV, really. I literally thought that in two or three years I was going to be dead all my friends and everybody I knew was gonna have to say bye to me because I was gonna just die. <laughs> I, I had no idea that the medicine was really good and that I didn't have to worry about that at all. So I would say for me, I accepted it pretty quickly. I was like, okay, this is literally my worst fear in life and it just came true. So what happens now? I can either crumple up into a little ball and give up and wait to die or I can live my life as best as I possibly can and just say, F it. I'm gonna do everything I wanna do and be who I wanna be and like no holds bar and just take back my life for as long as I can. So, but of course, the following week I have found out from my HIV doctor that the medicine's really good, that my life expectancy, at that time they were saying is almost as good as someone who doesn't have HIV. And for those of you who don't know, the story when I went to the HIV clinic this nurse came in he was this huge like six foot something burly guy tattoos piercings really gruff voice uh, looked like a big bear and he pokes his head into the office and he goes hey you know why you're here right and I'm like yeah cuz I have HIV and he goes you got way more than that dude you got full-blown AIDS and I was just like whoa okay so like I came to terms with the fact that I have HIV, but now I have full-blown AIDS. Like, what the f- On my birthday, too. I came to terms to grips with that pretty quickly because, I don't know, I just accepted it. I don't know why, but I just decided I was gonna move forward and that's it. But, so let me, I wanna tell you about the next year of my life because this is where I did a lot of inner work. So, Within, I would say, I wanna say, like nine months after my diagnosis, I went to a trampoline park with a bunch of my friends. Within the first 15 minutes of being there, I was doing front flips. I didn't know how, I was just like, you know, trying to do it, I'm be cool. So I landed it and I did it again and I was like, well, you know, that was kinda like rough, let me try it again. Second try, I landed it, but it was like, it still wasn't clean, so on the, I was like, this third try, I'm gonna, land this front flip. I'm gonna go so hard. It's gonna look so good. So I like did a huge jump. Unfortunately, I jumped across the trampoline to the other end. I still landed on the trampoline, but on the very ends where the springs are, that's where the trampoline doesn't give as much as the middle. And so when I came down really hard, my body um, compacted to the point where it wouldn't go any further until my my right ankle just literally popped three times, gave out, and my body squished together, and I, was, I just knew it was broken. After that, I was bedridden. I had a cast that was made out of ceramic from my toes all the way up to my mid-thigh. It was heavy, and I couldn't, couldn't do anything. 
I couldn't work. I was out of work for about five months. My, I didn't have money. I couldn't, I couldn't pay my own bills. I was completely dependent on my ex-boyfriend at the time. So the bank took my car back. Uh, I was in debt. Bills were not getting paid. So as you guys can tell, <laughs> the way I handle a lot of things is I'm very open and transparent about it and I talk about it and I share it with people. So some of the pe first people I told that I had my diagnosis was my parents and my sister. I told my coworkers. So I immediately created this community of people who cared, who knew and were there to support me in whatever way that they could. So I think that was like a really important factor. I know a lot of you guys don't feel like there's anyone in your life you can tell, but there are people you can talk to online if you need to have some sort of connection or share that with somebody. Also, I realized fairly early on that the virus, HIV, does not define who I am. It does not make me less of a person. It doesn't mean I'm dirty. It's, it doesn't define you. It's not a, a part of your personality. It doesn't determine your value or your worth as a human being. So please, if those thoughts are running in, in your head, don't try to necessarily stuff them down or push them away because that won't work. But override those thoughts by start affirming to yourself that you are worthy of love, that you are a whole human being, that you are a clean, beautiful creature of God. So, here I am, stuck in bed, ceramic cast from my toes to my thigh, and I'm like, what am I gonna do now? What do I do? So I'm like, I can start reading books, I can start listening to audio tapes and stuff like that. Well, as luck would have it, um, yeah, I was watching Oprah a lot because she had a lot, she just, I mean, she's Oprah. What else do I need to say? <laughs> uh, but at the time she was starting a 21 day meditation challenge with Deepak Chopra, which she's done so many times since then, but it's free. So I'm like, this is great. So for 21 days, every single day, there's a, a new meditation that you do that Deepak Chopra um, guides you through. Super cool. Also, The Secret was a thing at that time. And if you don't know what that is, it's this film that came out and it's about the law of attraction and how uh, like energy attracts like energy. So if you're trying to attract something in your life, you need to be uh, vibrating at that frequency. If you want health, you gotta be thinking as someone who is healthy, healthy minded, healthy in emotions, healthy in feeling, just vibrating health in your life and taking action that welcomes health into your life. One of the books that I read by Louise Hay herself, she's the, she's the founder of Hay House, How You Can Heal Your Life. And it's exactly about that. It's about the power of the mind. And it's interesting because I think, if I'm not mistaken, that she was inspired to write this during the AIDS epidemic, the AIDS crisis. So it was really poignant and uh, really helpful. Also, another one by Greg Braden, who I really liked at the time, The Spontaneous Healing of Belief. Then there's, uh, there's another film too, I believe, but I had the book also, it's called What the Bleep Do We Know? And it's related to like science and spirituality and what do we really know about the universe and what we're capable of. And then another thing that I worked on is called The Artist's Way. So it's, it's kind of intense, because you really dig deep, there's exercises that you do and um, you go on artist state with yourself every week. You do um, a lot of writing, a lot of uh, a lot of different a lot of different exercises. It's really cool. Yeah. So those are just a few of the books that I was going through at the time. I know a lot of you guys suffer from anxiety, a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. That's something that I'm very familiar with too. I know how it is. It sucks. And it mostly happens for me at night when I'm getting ready to go to bed and I'm lying down and it feels like there's no air in the room and the walls are closing in, I can't breathe, there's pressure on my chest and then the adrenaline just starts to go through your whole body. So there are a lot of things that I did to help me with that. One of the things I did was affirmations. I did a lot of affirmations to myself, whether it was in my head or out loud. Sometimes I, I would have anxiety lying in bed and I would think of something that I could say that was reassuring to myself that would counter whatever negative belief I had in my head at the time. So 
sometimes I just felt like a complete victim and completely at a loss for control and I and I, I was just at the whim and mercy of life and I was just being shat on by everything and everything sucked. So I'd sit there and be like, I am the leader of my own life. I am in control. I have the power. I am the leader of my own life. I have the power. I am in control. And I would say that to myself and then I would just feel my body start to relax and the anxiety go down. So depending on your situation or what it is that you're having anxiety about, you can start to be a little creative about coming up with some affirmations to help you with that. And I don't know what your guys' beliefs are or what, if you believe in God, if you believe in a higher power. And so yeah, I'll pray. And that helps a lot, a lot of times, just to pray. Or if you're not comfortable with praying, meditating. I did a lot of meditating as well. Whether you're listening to a track or whether it's just mindful breathing, slow breathing in and out or imagine like a white light entering your body. Another practice that I did was uh, creating a vision board. I got one of those thick white boards and I just got a bunch of magazines and printed pictures from online of things that I aspire to, goals, uh, things that I wanted to emulate or be like in my life and I just put on a vision board and I put that on my wall and so every day I would see it on my wall and I would just really visualize and see what it is that I, what I care about, what I value, and where I want to head in my future. Then I wrote down goals. I wrote short-term goals like in the next three to six months, and then I wrote long-term goals like a year, or five years, or ten years, and I'd have those written down, and those would also ground me and give me a sense of purpose and a direction. Another piece of advice that my good friend Jen gave me recently is when you're going through a difficult time like that, sometimes it helps to get out of your normal routine and to just start saying yes to new experiences. If people invite you to go do something or if there's an opportunity to, to join a group or an activity or something that's out of your normal like life routine, start doing new fresh things so you can start to create new experiences and be open to the possibilities that the universe it might be sending your way. One piece of advice that my Jewish friend told me is that in his community, what they do for grieving is they allow themselves to have two weeks of grieving. However you need to do that, however you need to be or act to get it out of your system, you've got two weeks. But once those two weeks are over, it's done, it's over, it's time to move on. That doesn't mean that you're healed, it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt, it doesn't mean that it's easy, but it, there's something about giving yourself a, a limited amount of time to just kind of grieve and then to know that there's gonna be an end to it and it's set and then you're gonna move on with your life. If you find that you have a problem with dwelling, maybe giving yourself a set amount of time to just allow yourself to grieve, allow yourself to feel, to cry, to get angry, whatever it is you, you need to feel, and then know that when that time is up, you're gonna pick yourself up, get your shit together, and move on with your life. All in all, the point of all these ideas and practices that I'm sharing with you, that I've incorporated into my own life to help me get through my HIV AIDS diagnosis and many other things in my life, is you're just immersing yourself essentially in self-love. That's like the most important thing you can do is Allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to be, don't judge yourself, don't be hard on yourself, don't be critical. And then love yourself, teach yourself, be a child and just be a sponge and absorb new, good, positive energy and thoughts and ideas and, and really just open yourself up to the future possibilities and good that life literally has waiting for you around the next freaking corner. If you just keep going, if you just take the next step, if you just keep your chin up and be hopeful, it's life's gonna open up for you. So that's all I got for you. <laughs> um, have heart, be hopeful. There's so much good. There's so much to be thankful for. That's another one I forgot, almost. <laughs> uh, 
a gratitude journal. Why did I almost forget that? A gratitude journal. Every single morning when I woke up, I had a journal by my bed. I'd open it up, write the date, and write 10 things that I was grateful for. And you don't want to write the same exact things every day. That's not the point. But you want to come up with 10 fresh things that you're grateful for every single day. Why? Because it puts your mind in the perspective that there is so much good in your life and so many things that you have to be grateful for that it changes your perspective and you stop thinking about how you're a victim and how life sucks for you and you start thinking about how good life is. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't forget that. That would have sucked. That's a really good one. If you like this video, like, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell if you want to get updated whenever I post a new video. And we're a community, right? So I want you guys, if you are comfortable enough to share how you dealt with your HIV diagnosis, how you deal, how you cope, or even if you don't have HIV, how do you deal with difficult situations where you're grieving and you're down and you're depressed or angry or whatever it may be, share in the comments below. What are some tools, tips, tricks, advice for that situation? All right. Thank you so much for staying tuned. I will have much more content coming for you soon. All right. Cheers. Bye, guys.